Today, I'm going to share with you an image that was taken on location with all natural light, but has the control and polish of a studio portrait. I'm Lindsay Adler, and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. And as a working fashion photographer, I'm often looking at trends or common uh, color grades or feels for images in the industry. And so right now, there's this look and feel that I only really know how to describe it as almost an HDR portrait. So what I mean is just a lot of detail in the shadows and a lot of detail in the highlights. HDR stands for high dynamic range. And often you see this with landscapes or with travel imagery, but I've been seeing a lot in portraits recently. There's a lot of texture to it and a lot of detail throughout the tonal range of the photograph. And it's a really beautiful look and it's very popular. So I wanted to figure out how is this done? Now, I have seen images where this is shot in the studio, but I often see it shot on location with soft light. It's usually not photographed with an image and achieved with an image that has really bright highlights and really dark shadows. It usually is a broader, softer light. So I decided to take my subject out on location to create a natural light, soft light portrait to use as the canvas or the basis to then try to achieve this HDR look. So let's pop outside. Let me show you what the behind the scenes looks like. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is that everything in the scene is actually going to be very carefully placed. It's all there for a reason. Uh, on the streets of New York, it is crazy distracting. There's, uh, I mean, there's someone in the background cleaning and there's construction and cars. And, and so to get a nice clean shot that has that studio portrait look, we actually brought a background downstairs on street level uh, to put behind our subject. And this is a brown muslin textured background. Now I put it very purposely in the shade. There was sun in different places. You can actually see it just to the uh, middle of the frame. You can see where the sun is. I made sure that this was in shadow so that I wasn't having any distracting highlights on the background. But then the other thing you might not realize is that where my subject is placed is very important because right behind me, you can't quite see it, but right behind me is a white door directly hit by sunlight. Now that white door, when it's hit by the sunlight, becomes a big, soft bounce reflector. It's a big, soft, beautiful light source. The larger the light source is compared to the size of the subject, the softer the light. So basically, the light hits the door. It's a big door. It's a big, soft light source. And it gives me beautiful, soft, even light across my subject's face. But if I move my subject uh, too far to the left or right, the light wouldn't be bouncing and hitting her. And if you look at the final photograph and you actually zoom into her eyes, you can see the white door behind me. And you can actually see my silhouette because I'm in front of the door. Last thing I want to talk about here is the camera selected. In this case, I'm using a Canon 24 to 105 millimeter lens. Now, this is a 4.0 lens. It doesn't shoot a wider aperture than that. So I actually shot wide open for this at 4.0 because I like the texture of the muslin behind her. I think it adds a little bit of depth and interest, but I didn't want it to be distracting. So I wanted it to be slightly out of focus. I've shot portraits like these forever. I mean, I, since I first started, I would look for these bounce reflectors, these bounce light sources, and it creates nice soft light. But I know that it doesn't create that HDR look that I see in beauty and portrait images that's really popular right now. That tells me that it's achieved in post-processing. So let's take a look at my experimentations and what I figured out for myself. So let's take a look at the raw image captured straight out of camera. And this might be the type of look and feel of a portrait that you might be familiar with that you've captured yourself. I've, again, soft, natural, light all the way across, but it doesn't have that HDR look. So in my head, here's how I broke apart that, that look and feel. Uh, first of all, there'd be detail in the shadows, right? So I want to pump up the shadows. And so I did that. Uh, I was using Capture One. You could use Lightroom. It'd be the same idea. But I brought up a lot of detail in the shadows. But in HDR, there's also a lot of detail in the highlights as well. So what I did is I darkened down the entire exposure and popped the highlights. So what that meant is all the bright parts got a little darker, but I still had the nice highlights on the cheeks and in her eyes so the, the picture wouldn't look dull. Uh, then in these portraits, they have a lot of texture. So I increased the clarity. The photo was looking a little bit flat, so I increased the contrast. But when you increase contrast, what happens is usually increase the saturation. So I just pulled out a little bit of saturation. So all of that was done in raw processing and this is what the result looked like, okay? I also added clarity and you see the increased texture in the skin. By using soft light, you actually get rid of texture. So adding clarity adds more texture back in. Now in doing this with clarity and contrast and darkening things down, um, I, I show some dark spots in the skin, it's still nice. 
But this next step is what I achieved in Photoshop. Okay. So smoothing out some of the shadows underneath the eyes and getting rid of some unwanted texture. And then the last part is looking at my inspiration is a lot of these, these shots have a lot of texture to the skin and this still looks a little bit smooth. And I also thought that it looked a little bit red. It's not quite yellow enough. So my last step, I pumped up clarity and also did a little bit of color grading. So color grading just means I'm adjusting the color to fit the mood that I want. It's not a right or wrong answer. Uh, so the last step is this color grade and clarity. And this moves at that last step uh, to being that HDR portrait effect. So I figured out from this that I could use a portrait lighting setup that I've been using forever, but in post-processing achieve a kind of a modern and more trendy look to the image. Have you tried this before? The looking for the natural reflectors for that bounce light, because if you have, then of course you can achieve an effect like this with some tweaks in post-processing. So feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know if you've tried the bounce light effect before. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe.